outside. The world is changed. I feel it in the water. I feel it in the earth. I smell it in the air. Much that once was is lost, for none now live who remember it. It began with the forging of the great reviews. Three were given to the elves, immortal, wisest, fairest of all beings. Seven to the dwarf lords, great miners and craftsmen of the mountain halls. And nine, nine reviews were given to the race of men, who above all else desired power. For within these reviews was bound the strength and will to govern the internet. But they were all of them deceived. For another review was made. In the land of YouTube, in the fires of Booktube, the Dark Lord Adrian forged in secret a master review to control all others. And into this review he poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. One review to rule them all. Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here with another edition of I Don't Really Like Any of You. This is September. This is the Fellowship of the Ring, J.R.R. Tolkien. This is the first six chapters, first quarter of the first novel, and you loved every second of it. I mean, this is going to be like Adrian Reed's Harry Potter 2.0. Uh, Life-changing, invigorating. Adrian? This is the end of the world. <laughs> As we know it. No, this is wonderful. This is miserable. No, okay. no. Okay. I got you something. Okay. Now, just to uh, prove the spontaneity of this, coming down here today, did you know you were getting a present? No. Do you know what this is? No. Okay. So, here we go. I got you something, and I want you to open it on set. Okay. Uh, lovely wrapping skills, by the way. <clears throat> You've never Shut wrapped off. a present for me, have you? No, I, okay. I don't get people things. Oh, okay. Um, this is going to take ten minutes. I hope Come you on, just it. rip it. Rip it. Ripping. Let's go. I'm saving the wrapping paper. You might need it again. No. Come on, <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> oh, God. Don't. You're looking at the back of it. Because you unwrapped it like a, <laughs> like a turd. Okay. Did you know you were getting it coming down here? No. Is that something you've always wanted? It actually is. Um, between 1 and 103, pick a number. 1 and 103? 1 and 103. 75. 75. Give it back. It's mine. You suck. <laughs> this does not belong to you. Oh, you're going 75. To... <laughs> All over. All over ogres and ochre jelly and octopus giants. Okay. All over. All right. That is not yours. Okay. That is mine. Okay. It is ruined. All right. You know it exists. Okay. This is how I feel every morning when I wake up and I realize, oh my God, it's a new day. I have to read Lord of the Rings. Okay. <laughs> I have to waste so much of my time reading Lord of the Rings. Okay. And I had a present, which was a new day. That is an Advanced Dungeons and Dragons monster manual. Yes. Uh, 1978, no, I believe. It was coined by Gary Gygax. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, that game defined modern video games, correct? Okay. All taken from Lord of the Rings. I don't care. Without Lord of the Rings, video games don't exist. And we would be in a much better place right Absolutely now. Absolutely not. Uh, the first time we went out to buy patrons, Dalton saw that lying on one of these shelves and said, Oh my god! You don't see those in the wild. I thought these were imaginary. The these fact that you just mythical. The fact that you just scribbled on that, you will furiously piss off a lot of people. Good. Piss them off. Good. And I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> and you're going to watch me take it to the dumpster before you leave. But Okay, okay. Because that's how each and every one of my days has felt. I wake up, I've got a gift, it is a new day, and it is ruined by this. Okay. Right here. So, a work of literature, a novel that was written 50, or 50, 20 years later creates this game. Yes. That does not exist without this. I don't care. Everything taken from that came from this. Well, congratulations. That is world changing. That is world changing. That is world not changing. Not this. This is world changing. You know what else without is... Without this, this doesn't exist. You know what exist. else is world changing? What? Chemical warfare. Okay. 
Would we be better off without it? Would we be better off without chemical warfare? Yeah. Yes. But you can't say the Dungeons and Dragons is chemical warfare. Sure I can. No, no. Sure I can. So is so is Lord of the Rings. Should we Wait, talk? Why are you focusing more on Dungeons and Dragons than Lord of the Rings? Because this is what I'm really you insulting. You can't just spring that on me. That's that's like those are so awesome. Okay, so well, Lord of the Rings. Yours. Lord of the Rings. Yes. Where do you want to start with this? Because you apparently do not enjoy it. It's awful. <clears throat> but since Harry Potter is awful as well, and we try not to dwell on those facts, one thing that's interesting to me here is this is the second book in this universe, right? Uh, technically, yes. The Hobbit right. would be the predecessor. So this is the second book in this universe. We're still so concerned with origins. It must be part of the human condition uh, to be hungry for origins. Okay. Right? Uh, that's all we really get early on. Uh, the first, I want to say 80 pages, are just backstory. Yes. Really. Right? Um, the entire preface is nothing but talking about what The Hobbit was. Right. Uh, and that was basically done out of fear by Tolkien that people would pick this up and have no idea, and no idea what it is. Because at this point, no one knew what a hobbit was. Right. Uh, to say a wizard did not mean the same thing as it did here. An elf, completely different. Tolkien built a world. He was concerned people were going to pick up this novel and not be familiar with that world. Right. And it's easy to say that all of this origin stuff, that's just part of the story. And it's because it's massive 60 years later still. Yes. Right? Yes. Um... And maybe you're right, but here's the rub. All of that history, the backstory, the origins, they're the beginning of this book. Okay. If people are not hungry for that, they don't make it to the stuff that's interesting later. Right? Okay. That first generation never makes it past the garbage into the stuff that you say is so interesting. So it does not spawn, necessitate, a second generation of readers. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the preface is a little trying. Uh, if you've read the... I mean, it is, it's a summation of The Hobbit, basically. Uh, what has happened to this point? Right. Uh, and when you're dealing with Bilbo, you get a lot of the old stories about Bilbo that are basically setting the pace for this novel. There, the first half, the first book of this book, is preparation. Feels a lot like Preparation H. <laughs> this story does not take off until uh, book two, uh, which we're going to get to after next week. At that point, things start to really start rolling, and you get into the meat of The Lord of the Rings. What's going to piss you off even more is, although this is a novel, this ends abruptly, because it was meant to be one giant novel. Uh, <laughs> I'm not reading the other books. Okay, so, if we take this, and we multiply it by three, right? And we're doing our story arc, we're still in exposition, right? Yeah. The uh, This ends with the beginning of rising action. The full trilogy, if my research did me correctly, is something like 455,125 words. Okay. It's impressive. This book is 177,227 words. Now, remember the math we did during Lolita? Okay. When we said, basically, uh, Nabokov had shoved an entire The Old Man in the Sea into, another, into a novel that length. Yes. Right? Uh, this book would have an extra slaughterhouse five. <laughs> okay. Because there's no dialogue, there's no white space, the chapters are 60 pages long, they're just bricks of words. Okay. It is incredibly difficult to get through. But, I'm okay, <clears throat> past the complaining, we got we got stuff to do. Okay. Um, this is a religious text. Okay, yeah. Um, religious texts are very concerned with origins as well. Okay. There's even a bit about lineage here, and religions do that to build credibility, right? Okay. Uh, Jesus was the son of Joseph, was the son of uh, James, was the son yes. of, right? Go back and back and back and back. And we get that with the lineage of the hobbits in the beginning. Right, and, and we get back to David. Yeah. You know. That old so, took. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, I, I saw this lovely thing. It was uh, a joke of C.S. Lewis and Tolkien discussing their novels. And Tolkien, in his very proper British way, says, yeah, I didn't like the whole Jesus thing, the whole allegory thing. At which point, Neil Lewis says, are you fucking kidding me? You don't see that in yours? He's like, no, 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 I don't like allegory. I, I just like a good novel. <laughs> and then C.S. Lewis ancient. comes back and says, are you fucking kidding me? You just wait. There's a lot of Jesus in this. Uh, coming of age happens at 33. Uh -huh. How does that not spark something? Uh, the people of Buckland live in the woods, which is wrong. 
Um, they celebrate Bilbo's birth every year until they forget he is dead. Um, gift giving of, and food on the birthday. I don't have to get into the Jesus stuff with that, do I? Uh, if the Hobbit... Uh, yeah, everything. Everything okay. is... Uh, just wait till characters start resurrecting. Oh, Jesus. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, but anyway... Uh, do you have uh, good things, bad things? I, I do have some because I didn't know how you wanted to approach this. Yeah, I figured we'd do this like uh, like the Harry Potter okay. read along. But uh, since you do everything wrong, go ahead. Exactly. Uh, this, you have to admit, is you said the trope of fantasy literature is world building. Yes. This is the pinnacle of world building. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to argue that. Uh, Mr. Tolkien not went so far as to, like, let me, let me get to this first page. You see all this lovely little yes. text here? That is written I'm, language. I'm sure it is. It is. The I'm man sure developed fucking languages to write his book with. I'm sure he did. And they're not even necessary. They're nope. supplementary. Yep. That's amazing. Or it's just a giant waste of time. I mean, it really depends on how uh, you look at things. If you're going to define fantasy literature as world building, that is insanity. Clockwork Orange. A lot of people want us to read Clockwork Orange. Right. Anthony Burgess said a big inspiration of his was Tolkien when he came to linguistics, linguistics and language building. I care not. Ah. Uh, that's, care not, that, I do. I care a lot about that. That's big to me. Uh, a lot of detail in this novel. That's where Tolkien gets a lot of flack. Right. Is he will describe a leaf for three pages. <coughs> He's a very detail-oriented man. I, I, I haven't noticed that as much as I have... They took three steps and looked to the left, and there was nothing there. And they took three steps and looked to the right, and there was nothing there. But there was something ahead of them that they had not seen before, and it was the wind. And there was nothing going on, but they did <laughs> keep taking three steps. Okay, uh, so here's here's something. Tell me when to... St oh, no, no, you're going. You're going. You're doing your stuff. No, you're fine. No. I'm, just, I'm pulling some quotes now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the first good chunk of this novel is where a lot of the classic quotes come from. Uh... And I'm surprised you haven't heard of any of these before. There are classic quotes in this. Uh, I'm old, Gandalf. I don't look it, but I'm beginning to feel it in my, in my heart of hearts. Well preserved indeed, he snorted. Why, I feel all thin, sort of stretched, if you know what I mean. Like butter that's been scraped over too much bread. That can't be right. I need a change or something. Very classic quote here. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. You've never heard that? No. Holy shit. No. Uh, there's a couple nice quotes. Deserves it, I dare say he does. Many that live deserveth death, and some that die deserve life. Can you give it to them? Then do not be eager to deal out death in judgment, for even the very wise cannot see all ends. Hmm. That's a good quote. Here's one thing that was interesting. Okay. When I finished, I was done. Okay. No, I'm kidding. But it is not your own shire, said Gildor. Others dwelt here before hobbits were. And others will dwell here again when hobbits are no more. The wide world is all about you. Is all about you. You can fence yourselves in, but you cannot forever fence it out. I think, for me, the most literature moment so far has been that the hobbits are just people. Yeah. Right. This is just uh, Tolkien's way of showing us ourselves through a different name. Okay. We don't have to judge ourselves and we don't judge different societies because the hobbits represent all people, but they're not called people, right? Okay. Like we're not given, like in, in Harry Potter, for example, um, the wizards still use Germany and France and uh, what was the other one with the... Oh, Bulgaria. Players? Bulgaria, right? Yeah. There's no... No countries really no, here. No, no. So we are left with this impression that all people are the same. Okay. If we're willing to look into it that deep. Now, we haven't got into this that much yet, but I think this will be an interesting point to keep in mind. You compared Harry Potter with World War II. This is World War II. Yeah, the ring is the A-bomb, right? Well, it, just look at it from this perspective. Uh, something you can't control gets dropped upon you as a hobbit, a simple person who has nothing to do with anything going on in the world, just trying to live out your country existence... And now it is your duty to help defend the known world. And you're going to create a fellowship with other races, of with other people, to take on the one prime evil. Yeah. A, it's World War II. But it's also a little bit of the Cold War. Okay. Right? I mean, we've got this, um, 
you've got the ring, which is the atom bomb. Okay. And that is, uh, there's some mysterious force lurking around that has some knowledge of it. Okay. And we don't know anything about these bad guys, but we know they exist. And they don't talk to us and we don't talk to them. But they're out there. But they're out there. Other people know about them. And there's people going between. Okay. Right? Uh, yeah, I can give you that one. So uh, that's Cold okay. Um, now, I can't agree with you. At first take, this can be very overwhelming. Uh, because there is a lot of backstory. There's a lot of history. There's a lot of... There is movement on action. Yes. Yes. Um, I've told you when we got into this, you're going to have to get through quite a bit of it before things pick up. There is a lot of exposition. Well, 138 pages has gone very slowly. So. Okay, we're well, you're looking more towards 250 before we start getting into movement. We're halfway there. Yeah, we're getting there. Um, one thing I would like to point out, though, it seems, and much of credit to Peter Jackson, the films were a huge success. Huge. They're great okay. films. Okay. Everybody's seen the movie, nobody's read the book. Okay. Uh, and I'm hoping a lot of people who have not read this before, but who are familiar with the movies, are going to be reading along with us on Fridays in September. Uh, you're going to find a lot of things very different. Uh, the book is completely different from the movie. Yeah? Absolutely. I have not different. seen the movies either. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, you get characters in this that don't exist in the movies. Uh, a lot of crucial, in my opinion, elements are not in the movie whatsoever. You met Tom Bombadil, right? Yes. The most interesting character in Lord of the Rings, period. Doesn't exist in the movies. You mean it's downhill from here? I like Tom Bombadil. Yeah, but we've already met him. Okay, we're going to learn more about him. He's an interesting character. Okay, so you said this was literature. Okay. Back that up. Tell me it's not. No, 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 no. That's not how claims work. How do you define literature? Literature is how you see the big through the small or the small through the big. Okay. Like, we've got the one thing with the hobbits that I gave you. Okay. Tell me something else that makes this literature. Like I said, this is history. We are in the historical part no, no, of no, this no, no, right no. now. No, I don't, I don't care that it's history. What I mean is, show me the literature inside it. Like you can with Hemingway. Like you can with uh, George Saunders. Like you can with Emily Dickinson. This, like we've done several times with Shakespeare. This is necessary world building of the genre. That's what we're in right now. No, I don't care. There should be literature in it. There should be literature present. Tell me when. Say when. When. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, paragraph between one and ten. Choose. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you were in a hurry, the road would have served you better, said the farmer. But I wasn't worrying about that. You have you have leave to walk over my land if you have mind. Mr. Peregrine and Mr. Baggins, though I dare say you, you still like mushrooms, he laughed. Ah, uh, yes, I recognize the name. I recollect when you came here uh, when young Frodo Baggins was one of the worst young rascals in Buckland. But it wasn't mushrooms I was thinking of. I had just heard the name Baggins before. You turned up. What do you think that funny customer asked me? Where's the literature there? You don't tell me that first line is not literary. If you were in a hurry, the road would have served you better? Absolutely. I'd... You don't see anything there whatsoever? No. No. Well, explain it to me then. Okay, so, big guy? coming of age, right? What's the big trope of uh, adolescence? You're always in a hurry to get things done. You're always trying to get somewhere. This is not the old man trying to bestow wisdom upon the young hobbits. Uh, the young hobbits. Saying, if you were in a hurry. Yes, it's different. You got it. You cannot look at age through that. Right, eyes. but he's already come of age. You cannot look at age this through is, that. Okay, okay, here's the thing. He is still a very young person. I can't say man because that is different in this book. He's about 25 in, in human years. Okay. Okay, go on. Where's the rest of the literature there? You don't say. Okay, you have that. You have that wonderful quote at the beginning. Then you have your history that you need to get You're through not, this. You are not justifying anything. And then you You're have just... the action. You start talking about the Black Rider. Now, okay, I will give you this. There is not a lot going on here. This first half is rough. Council of Elrond. That and moving forward is where this novel takes off. There better be literature. I'm telling you, in three weeks, you are going to eat your words on this. I don't think so, but I will give you some literature because okay. that's my role on this channel. Uh, Lay it on me. Um, here's the ring, okay? Here is the ring, the one that rules them all. What is it called? Lord of the, the Ring? Just the ring? What is it called? It's called the ring. The it's one called ring. the ring. The one ring. Okay. Here, put it on. Okay. No, I'll hold it. Put it on. 
Put it on. Okay, take it out. Put it back in. Harder, baby. You done? Okay, so we got the Freudian interpretation out of the way, right? Okay. Got the Freudian stuff done. Now that we've got the Freudian established, let's examine. Um, can you make anything of that? If this is... The man holds the power, the ring is a vessel, uh, but the power comes from the vessel. Power comes from the vessel. Okay, is there something to be made of the fact uh, that the precious makes men possessive? It makes them jealous, and they don't want to lose it, and they definitely don't want to hand it over to another man. Okay. So, uh, the feminine ideology of a ring. Of the ring. No, what I'm saying is this is vagina. Yes. Okay. Yes. Say it again, then. What do you What do you mean? The feminine ideology of the ring. The ring is feminine. Yes. Not the, the ring ideology. The wing, the, I can't talk. The ring represents a woman. Okay. Also, it is the gray old man who's telling all of these younger men how dangerous it is. Okay. Right? What's his name? Gandalf. Uh, yeah. Gandalf is telling them all how dangerous it is. Uh, also, the guy who has the ring always stays youthful, youthful doesn't he? Okay. Always stays awfully masculine, doesn't he? All right. Right? Okay. So I, I think there's things to be made from that. Uh, I will be keeping an eye on that looking forward. Okay. Would you like the ring? Uh, who's the oldest of those characters out of Frodo, Bilbo, and Gandalf? Bilbo, right? No. Who is? Gandalf. Gandalf's older? Absolutely. I didn't, Gandalf I is the human. one person who's resisted this. Is refused to accept it, refused to take the, the responsibility of the power because it would overwhelm him. Uh, Gandalf is essentially ancestral, immortal, however you want to take and it. And who is the wisest of them? Gandalf. Huh. Just saying. I, 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 we got to talk age here because age is going to get wonky. Yeah, it's a bit wonky. Because okay. you're going to meet hobbits and, you know, a hobbit lives to his hundreds and he doesn't yeah. come of age till 33. Gandalf's been around since forever. Tom Bombadil is essentially timeless. Yeah. We haven't got there yet. Elves live forever. It's very difficult to envelop yourself in that world. Yeah. So I, I understand some difficulty coming through this. So this this novel, what is it? It's a journey, right? It is a journey, yes. Okay. Uh, now here's, let, let's put it in movie terms. A lot of people didn't like these movies because they said, well, they're just walking around. I just paid 30 bucks for a ticket to watch three hours of some guys walking around. Yeah. There's a lot of that. That's all this book is. There's so a lot of walking. But But here's the interesting thing to me. This novel so far is just the hobbits walking around. Okay. The only other story mentioned is a mention of a guy who spent a lot of time walking around. Yes. Right? This is the hero's journey. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, and, and upon returning, uh, old Dildo Baggins became the, uh, he became the hero, right? Everyone looked up to him. Okay. He gave everybody gifts. Yeah. They celebrated him. All right. Um... I don't know if that's going to happen with Frondo or not. Um, it is an interesting journey, and it is the hero's journey. Uh, and like I said, this takes some time. This takes some momentum building. Uh, you have to remember, this is not supposed to be three books. It's supposed to be one big book. This is just your setting and exposition. Here's the thing. The first time I sat down to read this... Okay. Um, when I was a kid, I believed in the whole alien conspiracy stuff. Okay. And one of the big tropes with alien conspiracies and things like that is something called lost time. Where all of a sudden you find yourself in your living room and you don't know how you got there. You don't know where you've been since 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but it's 8 now. It's yeah. 9 o'clock now. Um, it's just it's like the antithesis of deja vu, right? Okay. That's how this was. I read five pages, and all of a sudden it was one in the morning. <laughs> what just happened? It is a dense read. It is dense. Uh, it's very classical British <clears throat> literature. Uh, there's a lot there. Dense but does not do it justice. This isn't going to be pop. It isn't going to be in your face, much like most of the novels we read. This is going to require digging and thought and... I think there's so much more that you're not feeling so far. I, I, well, you, prove it to me. We're, We're going to get the there. table. We're going to get there. Well, then you said so far. You said so far. There is not a lot going on in the first six chapters. Well, then you just said so far. You're not giving it the credit it deserves. We 138 discuss. pages in, have I gotten most of the literary qualities there? Tell me what else is there. Mm, in the first 130 pages, yeah. 
Yeah, pretty much. So there's a lot of world building and a lot of setting up. The Council of Elrond will define this novel for you. If you read and the where Council, is that? Uh, mid book. It is halfway. So why don't we start with the Council of Elrond? Why didn't old because you have to get there first? That's part of the journey. Tolkien. That's part of the journey is to get there. It's dangerous business going out the front door, Adrian. I I do not like this. I don't understand. Now explain this to me. How is it? Any single top ten books of ever that you look up will have this. You want me to tell you why? Why? Because you just made that up. No. Yes. Look it up right now. Pull out your phone. Find I don't have any my phone top on. ten list. We will do this next episode. Okay. We will do this. Okay. We will do this. Any list of top ten what? Fantasy novels? No, top ten just fiction of all time. Top ten fiction novels. This will appear on it. Fellowship of the Ring will be on it. The Lord of the Rings will appear on it. All of them. The Lord of the Rings, because it's always considered the Lord of the Rings. Not just the Fellowship, not the Two Towers, the Lord of the Rings as a collection. What happened to The Hobbit? The Hobbit is not part of the Lord of the Rings. Oh, well, I'll be damned. Yes. Why? I don't know. Because it's all in the first hundred pages of this book. Okay. But it's its own 300-page novel, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. It's okay. It's readable. The Cimmerillion? Not so much. That book's awful. So, what's the Cimmerillion? <laughs> that is when... Is that it... where basically Tolkien wrote Frodo's book, or Bilbo's book? Mm, yes and no. Uh, I, I believe Cimmerillion was actually published posthumously. Okay. Uh, did I say that right? Keep going. It sounds hilarious when I say it, so I think I'm wrong Does there. Does it sound humorous? It sounds humorous. Mm. Uh, but anyway, the Cimmerillion is essentially Tolkien was like, I've got all this research because I've spent 40 years writing the history of Middle-earth. I should write another book about it. Yeah, I mean, you might as well. You've already got... And do you know what happens when J.R.R. Tolkien dies? Christopher what? Tolkien starts publishing books about Middle-earth. What? Off his dad's notes. <laughs> And do you know what happens when Christopher Tolkien gets too old? His son, His son starts publishing books. It's amazing. You know what's going to happen when I die, like in two weeks and haven't read these? You're going to green screen Adrian on the other side, and you're going to just publish videos posthumously. Posthumously. I hate myself. I like to make up words. We've talked about this before. <laughs> anyway, I'm hoping a lot of people are reading along with us. Uh, a lot of people have said in BookTube world that they do not like Lord of the Rings. Probably because it's terrible. There's two people. There are people who absolutely love Lord of the Rings and just cannot get enough of it. And then there's people who just say, nah, I didn't read it. I can't do it. Can't I please join the, the ladder? No. Can't I please join the ladder? I'm already reading all the Harry Potter. I read through American Psycho. Um, okay, American Psycho is a contemporary great of American literature. Lolita, contemporary Lolita great. Was, I'll give you Lolita. Or not that was necessary. Great of American literature. That was great necessary for reading. Okay, so you're making me suffer through 19 Harry Potter books and the densest book ever written. The Harry Potter books amuse the hell out of me, but these are worth your time. It's just a book, a brick of ink. It's worth your time. It's just a brick of ink. It is worth your time. And if you would like to find out if it is worth Adrian's time, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. If I may, we will be doing a Fellowship of the Ring book, uh, Fellowship of the Ring video every Friday in September. Yes. We've got four Fridays to go. Yes. So we're going to do a quarter every one. Make sure you're reading along with us. Please feel free to upload your own videos, response, bring up some questions for discussion. Uh, however you want to handle things. And next time we will be finishing book one, right? Yes, we will have book one of the Fellowship of the Ring finished. Okay. If you would like to make my life worth living, you could join the ranks of our Patreon so that I don't have to suffer through this um, quite so miserably. The Council of Elrond, book two, part two. What about it? That's where it gets good. 250, basically, like you said, 233. Yeah. Okay, so make sure you follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover and on Facebook at Strip Cover Lit.